On the afternoon of the 22nd of May 2013, a British Army soldier, Fusilier Lee Rigby of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers, was attacked and killed by Michael Adebolaho and Michael Adebowala near the Royal Artillery Barracks in Woolwich, southeast London. Rigby was off duty and walking along Wellington Street when he was attacked. Adebolaho and Adebowala ran him down with a car, then used knives and a cleaver to stab and hack him to death. The men dragged Rigby's body into the road and remained at the scene until police arrived. They told passers by that they had killed a soldier to a Avenge the killing of Muslims by the British Armed Forces. Unarmed police arrived at the scene nine minutes after an emergency call was received and set up a cordon. Armed police officers arrived five minutes later. The assailants, armed with a cleaver and brandishing a gun, charged at the police, who fired shots that wounded them both. They were apprehended and taken to separate hospitals. Adebolaho and Adebowala are British of Nigerian descent, were raised as Christians, and converted to Islam. On 19 December 2013, both of the attackers were found guilty of Rigby's murder. On 26 February 2014, they were sentenced to life imprisonment, with Adebolaho given a whole life order and Adebowala ordered to serve at least 45 years. The attack was condemned by political and Muslim leaders in the United Kingdom and in the international press. Equals equals victim equals equals. The soldier killed in the attack was 25-year-old Lee Rigby, a drummer and machine gunner in the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. Rigby, from Middleton, Greater Manchester, had served in Cyprus, Germany, and Afghanistan. Afghanistan before becoming a recruiter and assisting with duties in the Tower of London. He was attacked when he was returning to barracks from working at the Tower. Rigby married in 2007 and had a two-year-old son, but had separated from his wife. He was engaged to a new fiancé at the time of his death. A post-mortem examination showed that Rigby died from multiple incised wounds. Rigby supported British Armed Forces charity Help for Heroes and was wearing a hoodie supporting the charity when he was attacked. In the five days after his death the charity received more than £600,000 in donations. Rigby was given a military funeral at Barry Parish Church on 12 July 2013. The service was attended by several thousand people, including present and former soldiers, Prime Minister David Cameron, and Mayor of London Boris Johnson. A private burial service was then held at nearby Middleton Cemetery. The first permanent memorial to him was installed in February 2014 at the Valley, a football stadium less than 1 mile, 1.6 kilometers, from the site of his murder. Equals equals attack equals equals. The attack took place shortly before 1420 in Wellington Street, and near its junction with John Wilson Street, part of the South Circular Road, A205, in Woolwich, near the perimeter of the Royal Artillery Barracks where Rigby was stationed. Rigby had arrived at Woolwich Arsenal Station at 1410 and was walking down Wellington Street towards the barracks. While Rigby was crossing the road to get to a shop, two men, who were later identified as Michael Adebolaho and Michael Adebowala, drove a Vauxhall Tigre car at him at 30 to 40 miles per hour, 50 to 60 kilometers per hour, knocking him to the ground. They attacked Rigby with knives and a cleaver, and attempted to behead him. Immediately after the attack, several passers-by stood over Rigby's body to protect him from further injury. Ingrid Loya Kennett, a Cub Scout leader from Cornwall, disembarked from a passing bus with the intention of rendering first aid, after she saw what she thought was a road accident. On discovering that the victim was dead she engaged one of the assailants in conversation. The man said he was responsible for killing the man on the ground, a British soldier who the attacker claimed had killed Muslims in Iraq and in Afghanistan. She asked one of the men to hand over his weapons, but he refused. In a video shot by a bystander, Adebolaho said, the only reason we have killed this man today is because Muslims are dying daily by British soldiers, and this British soldier is one. By Allah, we swear by the Almighty Allah we will never stop fighting you until you leave us alone. So what if we want to live by the Sharia in Muslim lands? Why does that mean you must follow us and chase us and call us extremists and kill us? When you drop a bomb do you think it hits one person, or rather your bomb wipes out a whole family? Through many passages in the Quran we must fight them as they fight us. I apologize that women had to witness this today but in our lands women have to see the same. You people will never be safe. Remove your governments, they don't care about you. You think David Cameron is gonna get caught in the street when we start busting our guns? Do you think politicians are going to die? No, it's going to be the average guy, like you and your children. So get rid of them. Tell them to bring our troops back, leave our lands and you will live in peace. Adebolaho also gave a bystander at the scene a handwritten two-page note which set out his justification for his actions. 
actions, the assailants remained at the scene and asked bystanders to call the police. The Metropolitan Police received the first 999 call about an assault at 1420 and unarmed police were deployed. Subsequent 999 calls said the attackers had a firearm, and armed police were ordered to the scene at 1424. Unarmed police arrived at 1429, set up a cordon, and remained behind it. Authorized firearms officers arrived at 1434. The two men, one brandishing a cleaver and the other a revolver, charged at the police. Armed police fired eight times and both men were wounded. They were arrested and taken to separate hospitals. A revolver, knives, and a cleaver were seized at the scene. The victim, Rigby, was pronounced dead and formally identified. The revolver was later determined to be a non-functioning 90-year-old Dutch KNIL 9.4 mm. Adebuala pointed the gun at responding armed police officers, who opened fire and shot off one of his thumbs. Equals equals attackers and other suspects equals equals. The two men who carried out the attack, Michael Alumaida Debolaho, 28, and Michael Olawatobi Adebuala, 22, are British of Nigerian descent. Both men were known to British security services. On the 23rd of May, a man aged 29 and two women aged 31 and 29 were arrested on suspicion of conspiracy to murder. The Metropolitan Police arrested three people aged between 21 and 28 in southeast London, at two separate locations on the evening of the 25th of May. On the 26th of May, a 22-year-old male was arrested in Highbury. On the 27th of May, a 50-year-old male was arrested in Welling. Of the eight people arrested, six were freed on bail, and two released without charge. Equals 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 Michael Adebolaho equals equals equals. Adebolaho, born in Lambeth to a Christian family, went to Marshalls Park School and studied sociology at the University of Greenwich. He has a history of involvement in radical Islamist activities and had been arrested at a violent protest and later released. According to Anjum Chaudhary, a radical Muslim cleric, Adebolaho converted to Islam in 2003 and was linked to the outlawed Islamist group Al Mahajiraun. In 2006, Adebolaho was arrested outside the Old Bailey during a protest about the trial of Mazanur Rahman. In 2009, Adebolaho spoke at a demonstration against the English Defence League and Stop Islamization of Europe organized by Unite Against Fascism at Harrow Central Mosque. He was recorded saying, Don't be scared of them, do not be scared of the police or the cameras. You are here only to please Allah. You are not here for any other reason, if you are here just for a fight please leave our ranks. We only want those who are sincere to Allah. Purify your intention. In 2010, Adebolaho was arrested in Kenya with five others. He traveled using a British passport in the name Michael Olamendis de Malaho. Boniface Mwaniki, head of Kenya's anti-terrorism unit, said he believed Adebolaho was planning to train with Al-Shabaab, a militant group linked to Al-Qaeda. He was released to British authorities in Kenya and deported. The British Foreign Office confirmed a British national was arrested in Kenya in 2010 and was given consular assistance. No charges were filed against Adebolaho. Abu Nuseba, a friend of Adebolaho, said on BBC's Newsnight on 25 May that Adebolaho had complained of persistent questioning by the British Security Service, MI5, specifically concerning his knowledge of certain individuals. He said Adebolaho alleged that MI5 had asked him to work with them and he had refused. He also said Adebolaho claimed he had been tortured and sexually assaulted by Kenyan troops after his arrest. Adebolaho was released from hospital on 31 May and taken into police custody. The following day he was charged with Rigby's murder, two charges of attempting to murder police officers, and possession of a firearm. At a court appearance on 3 June, he asked to be known as Mujahid Abu Hamza. On 17 July, Adebolaho lost two of his front teeth while being restrained by five prison officers at Belmarsh Prison. The officers were suspended from duty. Equals 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 Michael Adebowala equals equals equals. Following media reports that Michael Adebowala had attended the University of Greenwich with Michael Adebolaho, the university issued a statement, in which it said that there were no records relating to Adebowala in connection with the Woolwich incident, and that the university had launched an investigation into the matter. Adebowale's mother is a probation officer and his father a member of staff at the Nigerian High Commission. On 28 May, Adebowala was released from hospital and taken to a police station in South London. Police charged him with the murder of Rigby and possession of a firearm. Equals equals investigation equals equals. Investigators searched four houses houses in Greenwich, South London, one in Romford, East London, another in North London, and a property in Saxilby, Lincolnshire. Sir Malcolm Rifkind, the chairman of the Intelligence and Security Committee, said the committee would use new powers to retrieve documents from intelligence agencies. A written report is to be provided by Andrew Parker, the Director General of MI5. The Prime Minister David Cameron cut short a visit to 
Paris to chair a second COBRA meeting equals equals legal proceedings equals equals. On the 31st of May, the inquest into Rigby's death was opened and adjourned at Southwark Coroner's Court. The inquest heard that Rigby had been identified by his dental records. On the 27th of September 2013, the two accused men appeared via video link in court at the Old Bailey, where they both pleaded not guilty to the murder of Lee Rigby and to other charges relating to the incident. The trial began at the Old Bailey on the 29th of November 2013. Adebolaho asked to be known as Mujahid Abu Hamza in court with Adebuala wishing to be known as Ismail Ibn Abdullah. On the 19th of December 2013, Michael Adebolaho and Michael Adebuala were found guilty of the murder of Lee Rigby. The judge, Mr. Justice Sweeney, said that he would pass sentence after a key appeal court ruling on the use of whole life terms. On the 26th of February 2014, both men were sentenced to life imprisonment. Adebolaho was given a whole life order excluding the possibility of parole, and Adebuala, the younger of the two, was given given a minimum term of 45 years in prison. During the sentencing, Mr. Justice Sweeney said that the extremist views of the attackers were a betrayal of Islam prompting Adebowala to shout that's a lie, while Adebolaho shouted Allahu Akbar. Following a scuffle with security guards in the dock, both men were removed from the court and the sentencing continued in their absence. On 8 April 2014, Adebolaho launched an appeal against his whole life term. On 29 July, he was refused permission to appeal, and the case was heard by a panel of Court of Appeal judges. In July 2014, a Freedom of Information request filed by The Sun showed that Adebolaho and Adebowala had received a combined 212 1613 pounds and 32 pence in legal aid on the 3rd of December 2014 Rigby's killers lost legal challenges to their sentences Michael Adebolaho had attempted to have his conviction overturned and whole life sentence reduced while Michael Adebowala attempted a reduction in his minimum sentence of 45 years both requests were rejected at the court of appeal equals equals subsequent events equals equals the Ministry of Defense investigated the incident immediately after the death British service members were advised not to wear military uniforms in public, although the advice was later relaxed. In the immediate aftermath, Julie Siddiqui of the Islamic Society of Britain expressed concern that the killing would be used to create ethnic and community divisions. Sir Bernard Hogan Howe condemned the attack and called for a calm and measured response, adding we have met with community representatives, and extra officers remain on duty there tonight. Across London our officers are in contact with their communities too. Commander Simon Letchford later noted community concerns following the incident and assured that an investigation was underway. He also appealed for common avoidance of speculation. An additional 1,200 police officers were deployed across London to prevent revenge attacks on Muslim communities. The British National Party BNP leader, Nick Griffin, posted a series of Twitter messages blaming mass immigration for the attack and called for a protest rally in Woolwich. After the English Defence League called on its supporters to mobilise, some members staged a protest at Woolwich Arsenal Station in which bottles were thrown at police. The BNP scheduled their protest for the 1st of June, but Scotland Yard refused to permit them to march from Woolwich Barracks. The demonstration instead took place at Whitehall in central London. Unite Against Fascism mounted a counter-protest. Police arrested 58 people, all anti-fascist protesters, for breaches of the Public Order Act. On 7 June 2013, a 21-year-old woman from Harrow was ordered to complete 250 hours of unpaid work after tweeting that people in Help for Heroes t-shirts deserve to be beheaded. On 14 March 2014, a married couple from London, who pleaded guilty to disseminating a terrorist publication, were jailed for posting videos on YouTube which condoned the death of Lee Rigby, with one video describing it as a brilliant day equals 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 anti-muslim backlash equals 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 in the aftermath of the attack an anti-muslim backlash occurred across the united kingdom a representative of hope not hate said the number of phone calls to its helpline concerning anti-muslim incidents greatly increased after the murder hope not hate reported 193 islamophobic incidents including attacks on 10 mosques as of the 27th of may on the 1st of june Tell Mama, a government-funded project, reported 212 anti-Muslim incidents, including 125 online incidents, 17 incidents involving physical attack, and 11 attacks on mosques. It was reported on 9 June that government funding for Tell Mama would not be renewed, due to concern over the reliability of data reported by the organization, although the decision had been made before Rigby's death. Incidents ranged from verbal abuse to physical assaults in which women's headscarves were pulled off. 
Graffiti was scrawled over mosques and Muslim-owned businesses. Hope Not Hate claimed that online activity suggested some of the attacks on Muslims were coordinated. At least seven people were arrested for a range of social media-related issues. During the night after Rigby's death, two mosques were attacked. In Braintree, Essex, a man entered a mosque with two knives, threatened the congregation, and threw an explosive device, which witnesses said was a grenade or gas canister. In Gillingham, Kent, a man ran into a mosque and smashed windows and bookcases, specifically targeting those containing copies of the Quran. Two men were arrested in connection with the attacks. On the 26th of May, several petrol bombs were thrown into a mosque in Grimsby, but no one was injured and the fires were rapidly extinguished. Two former soldiers were arrested in connection with the attack. On the 5th of June, the Al Rama Islamic Center in Muswell Hill, which was used by children after school, was destroyed by a fire, and the building had been sprayed with graffiti making reference to to the English Defence League. The fire investigation was conducted by Scotland Yard's Counter-Terrorism Command, because of a possible link to domestic extremism. On 8 June, a fire at Daryl Ulum School, an Islamic boarding school in southeast London, forced the evacuation of 128 students and teachers, with police suspecting that the incident may have been a revenge attack. On 10 June, a senior Metropolitan Police officer confirmed there had been an eight-fold increase in the number of Islamophobic incidents since Rigby's death, and that the real figure year may be higher due to under-reporting. In the London borough of Hackney the Stamford Hill Shamram, a Jewish volunteer neighborhood patrol group, made an offer of help to the local Muslim community which was welcomed and subsequently commended by Hackney Police Borough Commander Chief Superintendent Matthew Horn. Equals 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 video footage controversy equals equals equals. Video footage of one of the perpetrators justifying the killing of Lee Rigby was obtained by The Sun and ITN. ITN's video, which was edited before it was broadcast, aired during the 1830 ITV news bulletin before the 2100 watershed, and again in its 2200 bulletin. After being posted on the ITN website in the afternoon, the high level of visits caused the site to crash and go offline for around half an hour. Total traffic on the site, which averages 860,000 unique users per week, reached 1.2 million for the day of the attack. Managing editor of The Sun, Richard Caseby, said the newspaper had faced a very difficult decision. Both media outlets argued they had released the video in the public interest. BBC News News showed some parts of the video. Sky News decided not to follow suit, as senior editors were of the opinion that the graphic images were unnecessarily distressing. Both ITV and the BBC ran warnings before showing the footage. Most of Britain's national daily newspapers grabbed still images from the video footage for their front pages the next morning. A BBC executive said that the news organization edited the footage before broadcasting, and dealt with the material as carefully as we could. The spokesman said they thought very carefully about the pictures, dot and gave great great consideration to how we used the footage. They argued that the footage was an important element of the story and shed light on the perpetrators and the possible motives for the attack. The Guardian reported there were around 800 complaints from distressed viewers. Most complaints were targeted at the television coverage, with ITV receiving 400 complaints in the 24 hours following the broadcast. Sky News, which showed a still image of one of the suspected attackers with bloodied hands, received a handful of complaints. On the 17th of June, the broadcasting standards watchdog off Com launched an investigation into broadcast of footage from the attack after receiving about 700 complaints. Ofcom published its findings on 6 January 2014, ruling that the news footage had not breached broadcasting regulations. Ofcom issued new guidelines to news outlets on giving appropriate warnings before airing distressing content. Equals 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 anti-terrorism task force equals equals equals. The UK government established a task force to look at ways of stemming the growth of Islamic extremism in Britain, focused Focusing on the radicalization of worshippers in mosques, university students and prisoners, the task force, chaired by David Cameron, had its inaugural meeting at 10 Downing Street on 3 June 2013, and includes cabinet ministers, and representatives from the police and intelligence services. Later that day Cameron made a House of Commons statement on the Woolwich attack, saying that lessons must be learned. When young men born and bred in this country are radicalized and turned into killers, we have to ask some tough questions about what is happening in our country. It is as if that for some young people there is a conveyor belt to radicalization that has poisoned their minds with sick and perverted ideas. We need to dismantle this process at every stage, in schools, colleges, universities, on the internet, in our prisons, wherever it is taking place. Equals 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 parliamentary inquiry equals equals equals. On the 25th of November 2014, the findings of a British parliamentary inquiry into the murder of Lee Rigby were published. The report found that the death could not have been prevented, although his killers had appeared in seven intelligence investigations. In December 2012, Michael Adebowale had discussed 
killing a soldier on Facebook with a foreign-based extremist known as Foxtrot. The UK authorities did not have access to the details of the conversation until June 2013, when they were disclosed to GCHQ. The Intelligence and Security Committee stated had MI5 had access to this exchange, their investigation into Adebowale would have become a top priority. Facebook said that it did not comment on individual cases, but responded that Facebook's policies are clear, we do not allow terrorist content on the site and take steps to prevent people from using our service for these purposes. In an interview with BBC News on 26 November 2014, Richard Barrett, the former director of global counter-terrorism at MI6, said that it was unfair to expect companies to monitor websites for all potentially extremist content. Facebook had blocked seven of Adebowale's accounts prior to the killing, five of which had been flagged for links with extremism. The accounts had been flagged by an automated process, and no person at Facebook had manually checked the accounts. Equals equals reactions equals equals. Queen Elizabeth II, political leaders and religious leaders variously expressed concern and distress over the incident, and called for calm. Prime Minister David Cameron made the following statement. This country will be absolutely resolute in its stand against extremism and terror. This action was a betrayal of Islam and the Muslim communities that give so much to our country. We will defeat violent extremism by standing together. We will not rest until we know every detail. The attackers told Ingrid Loya Kennett that they wanted to start a war in London and she replied, you are going to lose, it is you against many. She speaks for all of us. Many Muslim leaders denounced the attack. The Prime Minister's statement was echoed by Sheikh Ibrahim Mogra, with the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, the co-chair of the Christian Muslim Forum, in a joint statement. The Muslim Council of Britain said the attack has no basis in Islam and we condemn this unreservedly. The head of the Ramadan Foundation, Muhammad Shafiq, also condemned the attack. The director of Faith Matters and coordinator of the government-backed anti-Islamophobic project Tel Mama stated, We, as the Muslim community, will work against anyone who promotes such hatred. Anjum Chaudhary refused to condemn the attack. He said, I'm not in the business of condemnation or condoning. I think if anyone needs to be condemned it is the British government and their foreign policy. It's so clear that that is the cause. On BBC's Newsnight, when Chaudhary was questioned about his role in the radicalization of Michael Adebolajo, he denied any responsibility, and talked about such radicalization as a means to an end. He stated that he believed that not many Muslims would disagree with what Adebolajo had said in his videoed statement. Osgar Bukhari of the UK Muslim Public Affairs Committee said that both the British government and the Muslim community were at fault in dealing with extremism. He described Muslim leaders as unwilling to bring about change, focusing on points of theology, rather than the practical education of young people in ways to achieve political change. Baroness Neville Jones, a former security minister and chairman of the British Joint Intelligence Committee, and Colonel Richard Kemp, a former army commander, suggested blame could be put on internet hate preaching. Neville Jones told the BBC Radio 4's Today program that the inspiration that comes from internet hate preaching and jihadist rhetoric, is a very, very serious problem now. George Galloway, then an MP, said that the attack on Lee Rigby was indefensible. He criticized British support for the Syrian rebels, stating that similar attacks are likely to occur as long as we are, as a country, involved in spreading murder and mayhem across the Muslim world. Former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair saw the attack not as an isolated expression of two crazed individuals but part of the broader problem within Islam. In foreign press reports there was widespread outrage and condemnation of the killing. Yusuf al-Shihab, in Kuwait's al-Abbas, stated that the assailants have deformed the image of Islam while batter Muhammad Wardam in the Jordanian daily al-Duster, and other Middle Eastern newspapers, stressed that their actions have endangered the lives of thousands of Muslims. In a statement issued on 28 May, Adebolaho's relatives condemned terrorism and violence in the name of religion, and expressed their horror at Rigby's death. Equals equals attempted copycat cases equals equals. On 19 February 2015, 19-year-old Brus Holmes Omini was found guilty of preparing a terrorist act. He was arrested in London in August 2014 while carrying a 12-inch knife, hammer and black jihadist flag. Zamani had said that he intended to attack and kill soldiers, and had described Adebolaho as a legend. On 20 March Zamani was sentenced to 22 years in prison. On 29 April 2015, 18-year-old Qazi Islam, who was inspired by the 
murder, was convicted by a jury at the Old Bailey of grooming a vulnerable friend to kill two soldiers, and buying ingredients for a pipe bomb. On 29 May, he was sentenced to eight years in a young offender's institution. On 14 January 2015, 26-year-old white supremacist Zach Davies of Mold, Flintshire attacked a Sikh dentist in a Tesco supermarket with a machete and a hammer. He claimed in court that the attack was revenge for the murder of Rigby. Davies was sentenced to life imprisonment on the 11th of September 2015. Equals equals memorials equals equals. On the 1st of September 2014, Rigby was honored at a ceremony in Staffordshire, with his name added to the Armed Forces Memorial at the National Memorial Arboretum, a memorial to Rigby in his hometown of Middleton. Greater Manchester, consisting of a bronze drum and a plaque, was unveiled on 29 March 2015. Plans for a memorial to Rigby in Woolwich initially ran into opposition from local MP Nick Rainsford, who expressed concerns that it would generate undesirable interest from extremists or become a target for vandals. Greenwich Council said that it had not received a request from the army to erect a memorial at the site. Meanwhile, the site of the murder on Wellington Street developed into an unofficial memorial site. Following a campaign for a memorial supported by Boris Johnson and a petition with 25,000 signatures, Plans for a memorial near the site of the attack were announced on the 11th of June 2014. The memorial was revealed on the 11th of November 2015 after considerable delays, as the council had had to balance different opinions about how Lee Rigby should be commemorated. Lee Rigby's name appears on a plaque on the south wall of the memorial garden inside the ruined St. George's Garrison Church in Woolwich, opposite the Royal Artillery Barracks. The memorial consists of a white marble plaque marking Woolwich's history as a barracks town, and two bronze plaques with the names of 11 men who served or lived in Woolwich and gave their lives in the service of their country, including Rigby and the victims of the 1974 King's Arms bombing nearby. Equals equals see also equals equals. The 7th of July 2005 London bombings. The 21st of July 2005 London bombings. 2007 plot to behead a British Muslim soldier. 2008 Exeter attempted bombing. December 2015 London underground attack. King's Arms, Woolwich pub, site of IRA bombing in 1974. List of terrorist incidents in London. Terrorism in the United Kingdom. Equals equals references equals 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 external links equals equals. Media related to murder of Lee Rigby at Wikimedia Commons.